Hi, welcome, Last of Us, episode five. Ain't it, ain't it exciting? <laughs> I thought you were gonna go really, like, information-based. You're like, hello, episode five, EFAP, Last of Us TV the, show. The problem was I jumped right <laughs> into it and I was figuring it out in real time. Like, mm -hmm. what is the tone I want to go for here? Am I going for goofy or am I going for serious or am I going for something in between? And I'm not sure what I settled on there. Well, as is usual but with these sorts okay. of things I say as if we've done this one before. This is actually the first of its kind in terms of a format because it's different than the Hill House one. Very different than like Mando Kenobi. It's like complimentary. I don't think anything compares well, to the yeah, way we've been doing this. But which of course, I guess makes it kind of uh, appropriate as the proper inaugural EFAP TV, you know. Except Velma. I'm weird and no one likes me. <laughs> like Velma popped out right I, before. I'm, I'm, happy to, I'm happy to pretend that this was the beginning of Velma. Yes, Velma was just a sin that arrived around the same time. Well, what I was going to say about that is, is, is an interesting dynamic with this one especially because we're not just being complimentary and trying to give it room to breathe where it requires it. I, I mean that in both how we analyze it but also how it's presented. I actually wanted to start with that. A lot of people have been bringing up like in, in both complimentary and criticism the, um, the cuts between the show and the game in these edits. What criticisms do they have? I'm legitimately curious because that is insanely helpful for like me who remembers very little of the game. It's been a lot of compliments, which makes sense, but uh, the criticisms include like you're taking away from the experience by like randomly cutting into different media instead of the same one. It's like you're not random. It's, it's far <laughs> from random. Well, it's um, literally the show, the scene from the game that they're either trying to somewhat redo or base their thing off of. Uh, so I wanted to explain, there's like three big reasons. Number one would be, uh, yeah, for the sake of looking at how faithful this thing is or how it compares to its source material. And you might be like, you don't do that with other stuff. It's like, we don't do it with things we're not that familiar with. That's, that's just how it works. Um, been this way since the beginning. We talk about how faithful a thing is if we have the chance to be able to talk about it. We often don't because we don't know the source. That's just a reality for most people. But remember, how faithful it is does not determine how good it is. We've always been on that position, but we've always said, hey, man, it's interesting to have the adaptation conversation. Like, oh, did they change this and this? Like, why would they do that? Do you think that that change matches the thing they're creating or does it take away or is this a mistake through rushing and, and compressing or is this something that they expanded and you know fixed up or whatever? We've had plenty of those discussions and I think that those clips help people who aren't familiar. Secondly, it is helpful dramatically Automatically, you have no idea with copyright of all things you may you may not have thought but that that is like one of the primary things that was really helpful if I can show you a full scene of what happens in this story side by side with the game you get to consume almost the whole story from the uh, the TV show without it being angry and shutting the whole thing down so that's another reason why it's super useful but then I would say the third and finally um I think it is quite entertaining to to watch I think it actually does add to to see these too much. I try to build them in a way that doesn't, like, you get the similar payoffs as they're running next to each other while simultaneously matching for, for copyright, like I said, as a protection. But I think it works, but I uh, I just want people to know it's there for several reasons and it can't go away anytime soon. Nor can I, I think it's make really it smoother. Helpful. That's that. But look, I'm going to resurrect something, even though it would never really truly die. I just kind of didn't do it for the other ones because I was, I was just busy getting these things done. But do you, you guys remember a little thing called Comment Showcase? Yeah, oh my god, da, 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 I do. Da, 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 I do da, 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 remember da, da, da. Comment Showcase. It's a thing that just got a name really doesn't need one, it's just us looking at comments. Because I saw a consistent set of comments about uh, episode. So, like, the vibe, I think, was that we were too nice to the show in episodes one and two. Episode three, you, everyone's familiar with the discourse over that one. It's nightmarish, it's all over yeah, the place. Yeah, so good. And I actually feel like we happily did a decent job at the end of episode three going through the major ones, like it being filler, boring, irrelevant to the main plot line, irrelevant to the main characters. I think we gave our takes on all that. Episode four, there are criticisms, and there are things that people feel we did not cover as well. So we're going to just check out a few of them, probably take it in the little turns. Topic number one is Kathleen, the lady who is in charge, seemingly, of the Kansas City uh, 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 rebels. Uh -huh. Chiefs. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, we'll just go left to right, nice and simple. Frankie, do you want to read this first one? I found the leader of this Kansas City group to be very disappointing. She's clearly not a proper leader, ignoring dire cordyceps related problems to focus on her own vendetta shooting an unarmed prisoner during an emotional episode who is a doctor and will most likely help heal people in need or without the threat of death, and setting up ambushes and getting weirdly upset someone would escape and survive it. She doesn't have any charisma or natural leadership skills. She's just a lady in charge because she's the most mad about losing her family, it seems like. I just don't understand how anyone could take her seriously. I get the leader of the group wanted to kill the doctor but she had a situation where she was reminded of the possible need for a doctor and shot him anyway. 
there was a reason why being educated was considered a valid defense in death penalty trials for the last few centuries. When doctors are worth their weight in gold, it's not a good idea to kill them. Keep them prisoner by all means, but it seems like a stupid decision even if motivated by emotion. Lady up and killed one of the most valuable commodities in Apocalypse, a real doctor. You keep those pukes locked up teaching babies everything you know until they die of old age. If he done bad, then you lock him up underground teaching anything that can move and isn't infected. That said, I find it hilarious that they have Crazy Mommy shoot a doctor in such cold blood over a child, considering what two is all about. Sure, every dumbass intellectual tripped over themselves demonizing Joel, and with Cuckman desperate to rewrite history, to make Zebraman the messiah of the apocalypse, but I'm sure this will have no bearing on anything and will never be referenced. So, it seems there is a consistent problem with the idea that she killed a doctor and that she seems to be overly emotional and she shouldn't be leading. Well, I mean, the show is very clearly trying to tell you that this was not a decision that was made based on rationality, that she did this, when she was at least convinced herself, Henry and Sam, I assume, were still out there and killing her people, and that made her very upset and angry. She has some sort of a very emotional you know, connection to them, and that's why she shot him, as far as I'm aware. It's not much in the episode, but it's there. So she makes it clear that the doctor is someone who ratted out people to Fedra. Like, yeah, just to clarify he... for anyone listening, the situation is in Kansas City, Fedra have control, and they boss everyone around to the point where they likely did some horrible, horrible things. I'm assuming we're going to get more context on that. Um, yeah. Including, but not limited to, torture and kill uh, for information about rebels trying to breach the system. And uh, there were people who worked with Fedra to sell out their friends and family for whatever reason. Again, with who Sam and Henry are in the game, I imagine we're going to get a reason for that. I doubt they're going to leave it just that he just sold out his brother and the brother died. That seems like it would be unusual. By the way, the, the theme of what I'm saying in this opening is going to be we need to fucking wait before we can judge all these stories because they've not been told yet. Everyone's jumping the gun, and that's been what's happening throughout this whole season. But I think we're going to get a reason for Henry and Sam doing that, but hey, we may not. With her, she expresses that she's got some serious like love for her brother, as you can tell, and she wants to kill Sam and Henry for having led to his death. Now, I don't know more than that, but the doctor didn't lead to her brother's death. He just led to other people's capture and death. And it seems to me, with the aggression she has against Fedra and their control, that it's funny because uh, Gary brought it up in Open Bar, I think, after we talked a bit about it. He said, like, even if they're a doctor, you've got to be fucking careful as hell with someone like that if you don't trust them. They can subvert you in all kinds of ways, especially a doctor. They can get, they can still kill and make people live depending on whatever they want. If she just doesn't trust him, all you need to know is that it's enough for her to execute him. And that kind of, like, cold attitude is um, something a lot of people will flock toward for leadership, depending on what she's done in the past. But the thing is, as you can tell from these comments, a lot of people are like, how did she earn the role? Why would people have elected her? It's like, we don't actually know. Yeah, we don't have we a don't lot of know. information we, on her. How many, know how many virtually minutes nothing. of screen time did she get? Like five minutes, maybe? If that, maybe five little. minutes. When he pleads with her that he's the one that brought her into the world, she has like some a decent bit of acting there for someone who's brand new. Clearly there's more dimensions to her that are going on, but it, as, as Fringy Obviously. points out in the episode live, she's overwhelmed with vengeance. And of yeah, course, people the whole be, like twist, right, is that she is going to fail. Like her narrow focus on getting revenge to the detriment of to the exclusion of these more present problems is going to have serious consequences for her and her group. That's like the point, well, and obviously. This, that last comment references how like she's making the same apparent mistake that uh, the, the Joel was making. It's like, is everyone going to comment that? It's like, I think this episode will um, be about that. So that last comment struck me as odd. It's like, you do sort of recognize that the show is painting her as an antagonistic force, right? She's, she's probably going to get killed by the bloater and she'll probably die yeah, in a probably. scene that is like her choosing revenge instead of focusing on Pretty the much. infected. Yeah, it's, it'll it's, probably it's... come to a place where it's it's probably going to be the easy setup. You're going to have a bunch of people from disparate groups who were in this area together, and then you have, like, you know, bloater, a bunch of infected coming, and it's like, well, we could all work together, or we could fight, and then yeah. we're all fucked. Which is, also... you know, ties obviously into broader themes that usually happen in post-apocalypse stories about how all of these divisions that people draw between each other probably should fall away in the face of a crazy existential threat, but people can be stubborn. And we don't know how popular she is. She might be holding on to authority by a thread. There might be a lot of people who do not like her being in charge. We don't know if other people 
people also make decisions or if she's only in charge of a certain branch. I find it all a bit awkward where it's almost like, it sometimes seems like what's baked into it is, listen to her voice. It's not very threatening. That kind of sort of read of the character, it just strikes me as a little bit odd. Yeah, um, Like, I don't know why it's so hard to believe that somebody like this could end up being a leader. I, I guess I'm just a little bit perplexed by it. Well, yeah, well. if that's the challenge, if people are like, can you explain any environment in which this could be possible in a post-apocalypse? And um, a Drinker did on, on Open Bar, he was just saying like, well, society hasn't collapsed for them. They're building something there. She, if she's got the right qualities or she's proven herself in whatever way, if she organized them to destroy Fedra, then yeah, they're going to put a lot of trust in it. All she needs is a selection of people that um, are powerful, do hold influence there, that do think she should be in charge. That's enough. And that can happen with anyone. But the mm. big thing for me is just like, can we please have a little bit more from her before we, uh, we decide this is absolutely oh, yeah. nonsense? Right, because again, five minutes, maybe. I want to find out a bit of her history. Her motivations mm -hmm. for like why she's doing all of this. I want to know. I'd be it'd be cool to know why she's in power. I don't know if we'll get it. And uh, same for Sam and Henry. I want to know how they interact with her. And I think that's what this whole episode is going to be about. What the whole thing is going to be is that for as disarming as she may appear, she's probably going to be quite ruthless. I mean, she's willing to like, just like shoot people and kill them. Well, I mean, we got right that there. already. That should be which enough I to think give you an is easily years. coming from the fact that that's what Fedra did to them for twenty years. She's that kind of character it comes across to me. She, uh, someone that I was thinking about was, for anybody who's watched it, uh, House of the Dragon, the kind of character, the women in the world of Westeros, a lot of them speak softly, are calm, but they will kill you in an instant. And then they have plenty of guys around them that respect the, the decisions they make and sort of work as their uh, right hand, their fists, so to speak. They're enforcers. And if she's that kind of character, it'd be cool to see. I don't really mind. I'm I'm game for a lot of different things. Uh, I don't have a screenshot of this one, but I saw a lot of people saying it. Uh, I didn't manage to grab it in time. It was um, how fucking retarded that they put all that effort into making Joel smart enough to put glass down, and yet he's attacked by surprise. Dumb. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> that failsafe isn't 100% effective. Obviously, well, the, Ellie even said, "Like, are you sure you're gonna hear it?" And we don't even know, you know, who the you know the the people who get past that. They don't know if they're aware of it. They might have seen it and gone around it. There is the broad counter, just... and then there's the specific counter. The broad one is pretty much what you've done there. And and yeah, like this, you can subvert traps. That's the thing. Yeah, traps are not guaranteed. To work. Um, well, it's not perfect, but it's something. But the specific one is super interesting. The POV thing, they're not unwilling to do uh, the big POV film, so I'm assuming we're going to get Sam and Henry's uh, POV. And That'd be my they guess. don't have to, because I know how it can work, but they might show they put something down to make it make less sound, they, they move around it. It would be cool if they acknowledge it, but I don't think they even have to. The cool detail, and this was pointed out a couple of people in chat, I, uh, sorry, in comments, I didn't actually notice. It was highlighted that um, Joel's right ear is uh, fucked, basically, from overly shooting. I've noticed you don't hear too well from your right side. Is it because you were shot there? Probably more from shooting. He doesn't favor it, he favors his left. And so if he's sleeping on his side, which he is in the scene, he goes to sleep on his right ear, meaning his left ear is open and out. When he's woken up, he's sleeping on his left ear, meaning his right ear was up. Point being, he turned over during his sleep and his, his less favored ear was the one he was relying on. Which I think is kind of yep. neat to put together. Um, that is that's little, something they point out. That is a neat detail, yeah. Can't, I don't think you can blame Joel <laughs> for turning over in his sleep, right? That's just something that you do. That was a really nice touch, and I think also it's conceivable they could have come th in through a window or something. Um, not necessarily I've, that door. I mean, they've, they've been escaping uh, these people for however guys, long. They right? must be careful with everything they do. And imagine. remember that the big thing as well is that they are... Uh, his main... Like, Joel doesn't know about Henry or Sam. He's worried about these guys. And so the logic of going up there in the first place and setting those traps was to be safe against those guys, not other people in the, the city, you know, that they're not aware of as agents that are moving around and are very good at getting around safely. It's a pretty good system that he came up with. I, I don't find it, uh, it's find it weird where it's like, ha, it failed. It's like, yeah, I guess they do sometimes. Yeah, I'm just, I'm yeah. to be honest with you, it's kind of, get around it's kind of good we have different results instead of just they always win or anything. Consistent results, mm -hmm. yeah. He didn't provide her with a gun. She took it from Bills, uh, and she's also killed before. Preferred the game version to be. To be. And uh, the second one, if. Uh, you spend a lot of time discussing that Ellie was changed by having to shoot that guy. She mentions more than once that she's done it before. The writers probably shouldn't have included that, but they did. 
I think she says she's done something before, she's hurt someone before. I don't think that killing a person or whatever she's done in whatever context she's done is going to change the fact that she had to do what she did in that scenario. She uh, also didn't want to talk about it when Joel asked her about it. Yeah, my, I would say that our major points are just that her acting and the writing shows that this had a huge effect on her and Joel recognized it. Whether or not she's killed someone before, it still had a huge effect on her, which is what's important. And then uh, just, I'm not sure what the, the whole, like, he didn't provide her with the gun, she took it from Bill's. Uh, did we say anything different? Yeah, I, I mean, we saw that scene. Where do in we episode think three. he got? Or, of course, we know, where else we do know that she we think a, she got the gun? She from. got the same yeah. gun that um, Frank took out when he went outside to defend Bill. He was from the same place as well. So yeah, it is that very gun. Cupboard, yeah. Um, yeah, I know she took the gun. And then saying um, preferred the game version. I'm not sure exactly well, what part you prefer, but uh, I prefer the show version for sure on that one. Specific scene. If it's the specific scene of her shooting the guy, then yeah, the show is better on that one. Yeah, I think so. Uh -oh. But we will. But it's a scary thought, isn't it? Well, that's the thing. I'm, I, I've shat enough on how the, the game does things better than the show, but I think there are times now where there's the show doing things better than the game. But we got this one. I guess I'll read this. Here I go. I completely disagree that this was better than in the game. His cruel words and treatment give Ellie a time to stand up for herself, while reinforcing Joel's view of her as a burden, which makes her arc, uh, his arc more impactful because he grows to view her as a daughter. He's already treating her like a fatherly figure in episode 4 by trying to shield her from the horrors of the world. In the game, he made sure she stayed behind because he didn't want a liability and needed to protect his cargo. In the show, he doesn't want her to be traumatized and obviously protecting the cargo. A small difference, but it has big impacts on how the characters are viewed. I don't see Joel as a hard and jaded man that doesn't give a shit about strangers. His arc will be less impactful and I'm not okay with that. There's a lot here. <laughs> um, it is a lot. It is a lot. His cruel words and treatment give Ellie a time to stand up for herself while reinforcing death to So I assume they're talking about the game version. They are right? indeed. The scene where he oh. says to her like, And you just hang back like I told you to. Well, you're glad I didn't, right? I'm glad I didn't get my head blown off by a goddamn kid. That's almost meta, where you're appealing to what his words allow her to do as a character, or would allow her to do as a character, when in Joel's perspective, that wouldn't really be a reason why he said those things. What they did in the show was they had Joel essentially recognize that she did ultimately save him, and he doesn't get angry at her for doing that. He gets very, he becomes apologetic to her uh, that she was put in a situation like that that he shouldn't have allowed to happen, which is a different way to take it, but I think is ultimately really, really excellent and comes across as more fatherly to me, actually. Well, so that's part of the criticism. Well, I, I guess he's too fatherly. Right? He should be, it's too fatherly really? too early. That's. Well, that seems uh, too to be early. The, the claim yeah, here. that's the thing. I don't well, think yeah, this is too early at all. I think we've already done no, quite a bit of work. We're, yeah. we're in episode four. Well, so someone we're, I want to bring up is a while in. This whole his cruel words and treatment give Ellie a hard time to stand up for herself. Uh, give her a time to do it while reinforcing his view of her as a, a burden. They actually did this in episode three. Nobody made you go along with this plan. You needed a truck battery or whatever, and you made a choice. Don't blame me for something that isn't my fault. He's like looking at it almost like annoyed because that's almost expected that this whole thing wouldn't have happened if not for this new mission they had that was thrust on them because of all the shit that happened with Robert and uh, Marlene. In a way, you could see it as though if 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 Ellie never existed, Tess would be alive, and she cut through all of that immediately, which I think shows some level of emotional Ellie intelligence on her part. To, uh, to stand up for herself is the important part, though. Here, yeah, and then of course, like, in response to that, he's gonna see her, which he does at that point and has done as fucking this this thing I've got to deal with. But at the same time, she is a kid, and we've talked about how they've been chipping away at that, be it through her jokes or her commentary on anything, her way of trying to interact with him, what Bill has said, how she reflects Sarah, how she reflects Tess, and then like having to worry about what she should be exposed to and stuff. I think they've they've done all the beats they require. And the thing is, you might want to replay the game. He's already similarly as fatherly to her at this in the similar timeline, I would say. Now, now the safety zone, uh, do, do you know how to switch it off? I do. Okay, you just... You gotta respect it. This is not the Joel. I'll be careful. Okay. Yeah, because you've got to think about where these events take place in the context of other major beats. Because the really important thing with the Henry and Sam beat is that's the thing that makes Joel want to get off. You know, he he doesn't want to really do this anymore. He wants to pass this off to. That's part of the reason why he wants to pass it off to Tommy. He don't want to deal with the with like this feeling of um the peril that she's in. 
and how culpable he's going to be if she gets hurt or killed. That's one of the things that's informing it anyway. And in terms of the timeline, you know, episode four is about as close to that as uh, the payoff was in the game as well, to which one might be able to say, it's like, well, maybe he should be a little bit further along in terms of warming up to, uh, to Ellie by this point. I think one could even make that argument as criticism of the game because it part of what be. I like about the show's version is yeah you shot someone and saved me so you take the gun off her and then he's like okay fine here is the gun this is how you use it use it for emergencies like that seems the most reasonable development meanwhile in the game he takes it off her says she did something wrong and, and then she's later on is just like you're an asshole I I didn't break your rules for any other reason than I thought you were in trouble and she says uh whatever and then after that he's like okay I need to go down there and do things. Here's a rifle. Keep me covered. And it's it's like, you're supposed to gather, I think, from the subtext in the game that it's like, you see, he does trust her with guns now. And it's like, yeah, but nothing was given back and forth between the characters. It was more so just, um, you know, you shouldn't have done that. I saved your life. And he's like, mm. And then gives her the rifle. Like, okay. While the conversation in the show I found to be way more meaningful. And this is someone who really likes the story in the game. Just saying. I just well, think it was uh, It's kind of the problem that I have with the comment is there's not much of a... It's like, it's it's more so just pointing out how it's different from what the game had. And then sort of consequently will be less impactful without much consideration for how the changes that were made to this payoff here will feed into the arc that they're sending him on in this show which may be different than what was in the game. Well, like, um, there's not much consideration for anything that was gained by doing it this way. It seems to almost be being treated like a strict loss. Yeah. Which is a bit weird, right? Considering that it's like, well, surely you would have to acknowledge that what's been created here in terms of more elements of a feeling of he failed, and so she had to do that, and then loss of innocence, or, you know, something along those lines. Like, that that as a dynamic... There's got to be something there, well, right? So or is that is that neutral? Is that of no value at all? Part of what seems to be said in this comment is that um, that's something you would gain, like a fatherly expectation of trying to protect her from particular whatever experiences, that you, you should protect her from someone engaged with some. That's a fatherly thing. It's like, no, no, I'm pretty sure that is just a basic humanity thing. I if you're about, so. moving as an adult, if you're moving a, a human child around different places, they're just automatically... This happens in real life. If you see a kid fucking around with someone about to eat like something off the floor, you as a person and like, oh, uh, you shouldn't be doing that. That's actually, yeah. Whether or not they're cargo. And so, like, having those elements, is that's part of why The Last of Us is awesome. It, it chips into him with some other things that surround the idea of becoming fatherly to it, and then it'll generate that, that relationship. Oh, and of course, by the way, that I'm just not because in the game, he made sure she stayed behind because he didn't want a liability. So this is that ludonarrative dissonance coming back in. Ellie is an active participant in combat. Yes, and not to mention right. that uh, you can't even make that argument for the comparison because he gives her the rifle almost straight after to that yeah but that's a big one actually she actively participates in combat she'll like throw bricks at people she'll stab people with the switchblade like in close quarters combat so like joel is clearly pretty comfortable with having her be in the fray yeah he doesn't keep yeah, her like out I, of the whole area or anything almost, in fact that actually seems like it could present a serious problem and then uh, um... at least in facilitating the argument that you're making about like the arc that is going on and so when they say a and small difference but it has big impacts on the kind of the characters are viewed it's like i think i agree with you but i'm obviously gunning for the positive effects i'm like that it's, these that are small good. changes yeah. but they're having really good effects and then to say i don't see joel as a hardened jaded man that doesn't give a shit about strangers so first of all joel joel, joel cares about strangers very much yeah he um, helped henry and sam not only that he he is so hyper aware of the average person that he doesn't trust basically anybody until he's in situations where he is essentially they've proven themselves by circumstance like henry and sam they could yep. in the game have shot him when they met but they don't and that's quite a bit already for him to trust them then they find out that they're they're similar in that they're both being hunted by the local like rebels and so then they slowly connect and yeah he um he goes out on limb for them a decent bit so i would say game joel cares about strangers and so does show yep. joel so I, I don't agree with I don't that part. Know, then, game Joel and Show Joel are hardened. Of course they are. But, well, we how would we rate hardened? He executed a man by stabbing him in the heart. Like, yeah. I, I think As that makes you hardened. Like, I don't know, man. Yeah. And of course, yeah, I mean, killing those other guys as well. Whether it's the game or the show, I think Joel is absolutely intended to be seen as a hardened, jaded man who's somebody who has been a smuggler in this hellish world for 10, well, I go at least 10 years. I want to go further than saying he is. I want to be like, what is hardened? And it relates to like being able to do these really harsh things with uh, barely what seems to be barely any kind of emotional effect on you. You're that far along in experience now. Yeah, you know what needs to be that. done. On the subject mm -hmm. of jaded, he literally says, "There's no saving the world." <laughs> 
start saving that it can't be saved and that you have to it's much more tight-knit in terms of your priorities so i would say that he is hardened and jaded and you're wrong on the statement that either of them don't care about strangers. The the point being made here is that the show the show is like actually pretty good um <laughs> so far. Well yeah, and the whole his I arc think... will be less impactful. Can you please wait until his arc is over? No, just wait until it's over and then we'll see, yeah. Cuz uh I think they've got lots of pieces in place that could make it really strong. I don't know. It just feels like um it feels like even this far into the show it's like a lot of people aren't willing to give it a chance. Let it well, sort of play out. On that note, Rags, read this last comment right, recovery. Right. Four is beyond a pattern. The show is going to be good. Game of Thrones had four good seasons, but after that, I get you want to be optimistic, but the reality is a four good episodes is just that, four good episodes. It's more likely the show will be good, but it's still very possible they'll Hill House Midnight mass it up, especially considering how the two-second part of what they're adapting went. I'm just saying, be cautious with your optimism. So, um... um before seeing any of the show, I probably would have said it's going to be bad. Then someone would be like, it's made by the guy who made Chernobyl. Yeah, but eh, Neil Druckmann, though. It's like, Neil Druckmann made The Last of Us Part 1, at least with a lot of people. It's like, yeah, but look what he made recently. Okay, all right, fine. That seems like it's relatively reasonable. You can say it's going to look looking bad. Watch episode one. It's like, that was pretty solid. Uh, I mean, it might be okay. Watch episode two. It's really solid. You're like, uh, I don't know. It's still fine. Watch episode three. You're like, damn, that was even a risky move, and you managed to nail it. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, sure, maybe. Watch episode four, really solid and filled in a whole bunch of blanks we were looking for. It's like, at this point, it's like, well, I would just be lying to you if I said that I thought it was still going to be bad. Of course, I now think it's going to be good. I felt the same way for House of the Dragon. Felt the same. I would have said the same for Hill House and Midnight Mass. As we were watching it, I'd be like, this is going to be great. In fact, Midnight Mass, <laughs> after a couple of episodes, I would have said, this is going to be fucking amazing. Well, I think it's, it's relatively straightforward, right? By the end of season four of Game of... Well, I guess before the finale, right? Because that's where you think it goes bad. If somebody yeah. went into season five with the expectation that it would be good, nobody would say that that's unreasonable. Yeah, I think the reasonable like, position right now of, is that the show it, will be good. Yeah, because the other one would just be assuming that it's going to completely collapse based when all of the input so far has been positive we've had loads of standard setups and payoffs we're running characters in a very consistent way they seem to care about how they build their world and they seem to pay attention to like ammo and gun limitations as well as human limitations for a lot of things characters have made some pretty clever decisions here and there i'm not going to say it's flawless because it isn't a lot of it's um, the detail of the production standpoint um, but when you see all of those values being repeated, you're like, all right, I think there's, there's good reason to assume that this will be repeated in the future episodes because these are all made together. I don't see why yeah, not. Yeah, if I was um, going to guess, I would guess that it would be good. But, uh, you know, you can appeal, and rightly so. It could be anything. It could be a disaster that we're about to see in episode five, six, seven, eight, nine. That could be. But yeah, it could be. could be. Doubt it, though. I just don't think it will, yeah. I think uh, if we're going to be betting on one thing right now, it's that the show will be good. Yeah, yeah, that would be that would be the safest bet, I think. And if someone right. said "aha" turned out to be bad, I'd be like, "Safest bet at this point was good, though." I don't, I don't. What would be the "aha"? I'd be like, "Well, yeah, but I'm pretty happy with a lot of the the coverage so far and the dissection and analysis of the show." There's not really any motivation for us to be nice to this show. We've been kind of rule to the last of us ip for the past few years i was not expecting this to be this good and of course there were all the comments beforehand about video games and adaptations that were pretty frustrating as well yeah like um it, even though this is probably one involved. of if not the best uh, uh i mean if it stays at this rate, uh, if it stays at, i mean the fact that we've had four good episodes puts it really high up anyway i guess the more relevant question would be how does it stack up to arcane by the end Oh, well, that's the thing. Arcane, I, I feel uh, like Arcane's Arcane a different thing. Now. Faithfulness, low, but quality oh, high. Right, sure. here, this is faithfulness, pretty high, quality high. high. I doubt I'll like it as much as Arcane by the end, but you know what? Arcane's I'm happy to be surprised. Yeah, well, it's just Arcane, Arcane, is... Arcane had a ton of moving Ooh. parts. Um, that's it has top a lot tier. Of characters, it's a tough one to be. A lot of characters with great arcs. In any Whereas case, very, you guys yeah. ready for us to watch episode five? I am ready. I am yep. so ready. I'm actually a little bit excited for this one. So... The record. I've not really heard much complaints for this one. Mostly just praise. I don't praise. know anything. So. Yeah, I don't know really either. I've been trying to avoid. Uh, the assumption we have, of course, is that this is just going to be the conclusion of the Kansas City arc. Yes. Everything here. Well, Henry, Sam, and Kathleen's function. stories will likely end in this one, or maybe continue. You never know. Kathleen yeah. seems to me like the kind of person that will die this episode. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And I think it will be the bloater. I, I just want to see the bloater man squish someone's head like a, like a tomato. I want to see the blow to go, woo! Yeah. Definitely done away with them uh, opening scenes, huh? Yeah.
Well, yeah, I guess we were wrong about that. We kind of thought that that might continue forever. It might have just be now we don't get any more at all. Because you never know. When are they going to make the first of us the prequel? The last of them. The first of us, the precursors. Well, not legacy. It'll just be the precursors. I sure do love freedom. Oh, Freedom's, is this? Freedom's great. This, this is, is when is... they beat Fedra. Yeah, I assume so. Yeah, yeah. Fuck you, Fedra. Yeah. That would be. It. Man, there's a lot of people here too. Yeah, there is a lot of people. Yeah, I'd have to imagine this is going to be building up who these bad guys are. Oh, this seems. Maybe this is a bit much, fellas. This is, this is definitely uh, not okay. Oh, come on, guys, use your words. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know. Maybe Fedra, we're really bad, <laughs> really bad. Oh, so yeah, this will be Henry and Sam. You'll receive a fair trial. Yeah. Nope. Sure if you have to will. assure me that that's a thing you're gonna do, <laughs> then I'm like, oh yeah, we're already past me believing. Oh you. Jesus oh, Christ, geez. just dragging a dude. Yeah, this is. This is encouraging about your free fair trials. It's almost like a Looney Tunes death full of knives like that. <laughs> yeah, the, seriously, this is the way to do it. Start off with these guys, give them a... Gotta get to learn them. Well, especially if this is the only episode we get with them. Well, it's a big if. Who knows? Blood smears all over the walls. See that? Oh, yeah. yeah. I see Reassuring. <laughs> Hurts the ambience. You know, Perry, I used to be so scared of these people. Did it feel good? Betraying your neighbors to Fedra, watching us hang, so that you could get medicine, alcohol, fucking apples. How does it make you feel now? We could put you on trial. You're all guilty, so that's how that'll go. Where is Henry? You're informers. Inform. Kill them. He's with Edel's team. Well, he was a lot more discreet than you fucking idiots. Where are they? He had a place to hole up in the open city. Ha haven't you heard? Kansas City is free. I swear, I've told you everything I know. Of course you have. You're a rat. I don't think they're ever going to let rats, so to speak, ever be uh, non-prison or non-killed. Well, yeah, some... the perception would be that if they've done it before, they can do it again. It's not even just that. It's like a, um, you chose that when we were at our worst, right. so at our best, yeah. you don't deserve shit, and you won't get shit. He's not my seventh priority, Perry. Is that what he is to you? No. Right, so this whole time, he's sort of just been like, hmm, about this vendetta. We are not really putting them on trial. When you're done, burn the bodies. It's faster. Oh, that'd be yeah, the body this one means she's exactly what we expected in terms of the way that she conducts herself. She's clean Disarming and ruthless. ruthless. Yeah. And it's simple math to her. You betrayed us, you got us killed, you got us hanged, now you get mm. hanged, sort of thing. Uh, yeah, she's gonna be a vengeance character. And like, you saw what everyone was doing there. Apparently her executing people is not out of the fucking realm of usual. Yeah, they're not acting like this is something that she just came up with that day, or that yeah. moment. It seems like, like yeah, Fedra were doing do. it to them for years, and then they did it. Do you see what they were fucking doing it to, seems like, to be the rules. Them? Yeah, that's the rules of the game, apparently, is just how everyone's operating. I'm wondering if, uh, is it that... Sam is deaf, or that they're using sign language because it means they can communicate without, you know, making a sound. I don't know. Seems like it would be... Oh. Well, I guess we're about to find out. Oh, it's... Oh, is he the guy? Is he yeah. Edelstein, then? Must be. Oh, Edelstein grunting, there you go. <laughs> oh, so when we caught up with him, like, he had just been captured, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, because this was the room that they found in the episode. Right. I barely made it out as is, so we're fucked on food. Ammunition? Empty. Yeah, so is mine. So we'll sneak our way out. Tunnels? Tunnels? Why go to the trouble? You can kill yourself right here. I think we can make it 11 days? So that's how long we have to figure it out. He's scared because you're scared. I wonder if we're gonna get some parallels for these two. We get ourselves establishing some little, you know, things they like to do. Well, I remember when they encountered uh, bonding. Joel and Ellie, he kind of had, he'd like drawn on kind of like the, what were they saying? Super Sam, the superhero kind of Yeah, persona. they were both drawn as superheroes. Makes them brave. Makes them feel, yeah, brave. 
I wonder how you do italics in sign language. Yeah, I guess. No more food and everything. You gotta leave. Yeah, they were mentioning that they needed to figure out a plan to leave here within um, the 11 days. Yeah, but, um, 11 works. days, assuming that it was the three of them splitting the food. So it's probably been you know, around that. Well, it's been 10 days, they said before, so it must be 11 oh, gotcha. now. So they need to move out to... the food. They I don't, don't know if they have out. an escape plan yet, though. Doesn't seem like, like they do. I mean, guessing... whatever plan they might have had might have been ruined by them doing all these patrols. Also, the death of... Uh... Edelstein. I like that us spending so much time with these characters right now is helping even out the distribution of screen screen time across all characters. Like the the Bill episode up until now felt like very uh, unique in its its lack of Joel and Ellie, but now we have an, right. another episode like it. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, and I like think getting carried through. If yeah. this story is kept to the game story, I think this one's gonna go over way better with people. Yeah. I think um, one of the benefits that they're having with the show is that because the game has a fixed perspective on Joel and Ellie, because of them being player characters, means that you can't really have scenes like this in, in those games. Yeah. Whereas here, you can have the, uh, you know, just episodes yeah, this... on about Joel and Ellie because it's not a fixed perspective show. If you want to get to Brass Tax, technically speaking, this is all unfaithful right now. This isn't in the game. Right, because this but... is a story that we didn't get, but it's good story. I like well, and, it and I think people, most people would say that it is faithful so far. Uh, well, well, because I, it's, it's, we're yeah, making a distinction in. between like disfaithful and unfaithful in a way where if it's not contradictory, it's one thing. If you're adding supplemental stuff, it's another. Yeah. Oh, that'll be so Joel. This... So a question I was going to have was the nature in which they got to Joel and Ellie. Right. And yeah. if it and is as simple as they followed them, then good. <laughs> yeah. Because it looks like that might happen. There'll be one more yeah. gunshot to here, right? With Ambush. the shotgun when he busts her, yeah. Yeah. Well, two more shots. Oh, you're right, yeah. And then a oh, yeah. Uh, series of screams. Ah. Or maybe they cut so... before. <laughs> Mm, yeah, they probably did. I guess they're thinking we'll follow these guys. These are these are not friends of our enemies, so yeah, yeah enemies of our enemies well. will hopefully be our friends. Oh, it's Ooh, not a bad idea. Job. Oh, there you go. It's addressed. <laughs> All right, there you go. That's what I mean, guys, you just gotta wait. <laughs> like... Remember what to do. Yeah. And I think this show, with the quality we've seen so far, certainly did deserve the benefit. I of don't pointing that at me. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. I don't like point that. the gun at me. Like, no, do not point the gun at me. Doing their best to avoid it. Oh, all right. That was here pretty expeditious. Yeah, now we're here. Yeah, that was quick. Eyes on me. Okay. We didn't hurt you, so you don't hurt us. That's right. So we're fucking tall, man. That's just the way he sounds. He has an asshole voice. Joe, tell him he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> he has an asshole Everything voice. Is Everything is great. Dude, dude. <laughs> Everything is great, dude. <laughs> They've really got so little choice, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They can't get these Did two to help them. Did you guys try anything? Yeah? My name's Henry. It's my brother Sam. I'm the most wanted man in Kansas City. Okay, I pegged him for Although a right while. I guess he's running a close second. Well, yeah, that's about how I'd expect that to go, I suppose. Yeah. He says, thank you. I guess you don't have much, so... This means a lot. I'm Ellie. I'm Joel. You wait. We didn't kill each other. Let's call this a win-win and move on. Let's call it a win-win. <laughs> I all came up here to get a view of the city and plan a way out. And when the sun's up, I'll show you one. All right, we got someone you want. Hey, okay. all right. And Joel is a very capable man. Well, yeah, it looks like that's where they're drawn to him as well, right? Yeah, you're right. You would have saw yeah. him shooting. They've been tortured and murdered people for 20 years. Oh, there you go. You know what happens when right. tortured and murdered for 20 years from Fedra. That's why these people are fucking crazy then. Yeah. I'm a collaborator. I don't work with rats. Yeah, you fucking do. I know the city, and that's how I'm going to help you get out. You seem capable enough, you're armed. And wrong, and wrong. I never killed anyone. And pointing an unloaded gun at you was the closest I've ever come to being violent. Oh yeah, that's right, their guns were empty, remember? Ammunition? Empty. Yeah, so is mine. That's right, they are empty, yeah. Doesn't it at all feel like there's just all the blocks that are required are getting built? Like, one by one? Yeah. Like, yep, information <laughs> required here, got it. Information required here, got it. Wow. <laughs> 
Hold All right, on. ready? Oh. Ow! <laughs> a blueberry hurt you? <laughs> it's been a while since that boy even cracked a smile. that in a long time. She doesn't seem bothered by all this. So where were you heading? So how are we getting out? And now you can uh, do some character the, stuff. Hey, that's, that's the binding element, these two kids. I have heard that in a long home. time. Yeah. And Joel's still very... That is the jaded element of him. He's struggling. Yeah. Whenever nice things happen, he's like, nah, nah. Highways. Downtown. Us. They got people posted all around the inside perimeter. If we get close, we get caught. I can't remember what, like, toy or something that's from. I want to say that it's well, slightly familiar. So I, I know that kind of toy, you know? Yeah. 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 Which is pretty, pretty clever. I like that. Is it done with magnetism? I can't remember. Yeah, they're ah. magnetic filings that are drawn yeah. to the surface with the pen. Bridge over the river. Also, um... It's just worth saying, I think the actors for Henry sound pretty good so far. Yes. Yeah. You notice anything strange about this city? I mean, no infected. No infected. Where are they infected? Oh. Yeah. There's yeah. infected. Fedra drove them underground 15 years ago and never let them come back up. The Fedra guy that I worked with told me that it's clean, completely clean. They cleared it out, all of it. When? Like, three years ago. Hmm. Okay, maybe there's one. <laughs> Did you see that he like frowned at him, then looked over yeah. and be like, no, no, no good. <laughs> you ran into a clicker. Two of them. And you're still alive. You're the right people. If well, it's bad down there, we turn if it's around, the best option. Oh, that's your great plan? No, that's my dicey as fuck plan. No, that's the problem. Yeah, you can't stay here. They're going to help us escape. Right? It feels to me like Joel would find it so much easier to fuck this guy over if it was just him and not this other kid with him, because it makes it much difficult yeah. to treat this, these people as non-genuine. They probably yeah. are. You need to get out of sight. Uh, I, I think it's this way. Showing that age there, Joel, as well. Yeah, he's tired. Get your gun out. Where she left it. I'm not sure from that expression if he knew and he was just like, yeah, I know you put it in your fucking pocket. I know you didn't listen yeah. to me. She seems pretty happy to be told to pull it out. Yeah. Plan is good. Plan is good. We've been down here two seconds. We don't know anything. That's kind of a pessimist. I'm not, not my dad. dad. Just point your light forward. This is just you and your daughter. We're not leaving. I'm on our family. I promised someone I'd look after. Be ready to run. Because most of this hasn't been like the game so far. Oh yeah, it's quite different. The thing is, we got the sewer sequence. I guess is that this is what we'll be doing instead. It's similar enough. Yeah, pretty spoopy down there. No. Hey, you don't know what's in there, man. Doesn't surprise me at all. I think Joel is generally protective of children. I think a lot of people just naturally would be. Well, I think it's, if someone wanted to say like, well, there's some people who aren't. It's like, well, Joel, obviously, it makes sense that he would be. He's been a father. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. A lot of people at base are anyway. I heard about places like this. People went underground after it's outbreak a nice day. Set. Built settlements. What happened to them? Maybe they didn't follow the rules and they all got infected. <laughs> That's straight out of the game. That uh, picture. No way! Four, five, six, eleven. Ah, oh, so cool. Endure, survive. Endure, survive. Fuck yeah, man. Keep it down, we're not out yet. Oh, come on. Can we just rest here for a while? Wouldn't it be so bad to wait the light out a bit? Save for in shadows when we pop back out on the other side. Makes it the same, Don't sir. Hey, Sam. Yeah. Stay with us, Cole. Oh, okay. <laughs> Come on, where's the back? <laughs> yeah! Did you see that? Let's keep it down, buddy. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that makes Not sense. Not very jaded, though, is he? Yes! 
That's what I mean. I don't understand. Like, if someone hadn't even played the game, they would be like, "This Joel guy, man, he's like a he's like a downer in every environment." It's like, yes, he yeah. is. That's that's who he is. <laughs> Nothing is ever safe. Nothing is ever e like. Look at that. Collaborating to take care of him. I shouldn't have said what I said. It seems kind of cruel to send a whole army after you for that. Sam, he uh, he got sick. There was one drug that worked, and it belonged to Fedra. He was gonna take something big. So I gave him something big. That one green man. The leader of the resistance movement in Kansas City. And Kathleen's brother. Well, that's probably why she's in charge. That yeah. Would, uh, yeah. That would, yeah. And why she has oh, a wow. big bone to pick here. Yeah, not kind of like, man, oof. And that's why she's ruthless. And that's why everybody yeah. is the way that they are. Yeah. This guy apparently was fucking great. I am the bad guy because I did a bad guy thing. Man. Almost like you guys should have waited. A little bit. Could you imagine dealing some significant damage on behalf of one person, Joel? Could you do that? It's pretty good as a seed to set up for later on. Yeah. It's just, they're just doing the work they're supposed to. The whole season is yeah. going to build up all, with all these different environments and characters doing their different choices, and then he's going to have his. This is kind of the last of us 2 in microcosm this story i like the cycles of violence well i mean she's abby and henry is joel why are you talking to my mom we didn't know where you were when michael and i were little this room seemed so big michael told me that this wasn't a room at all it's a big wooden box that nothing could get inside of he said, as long as we were together, we would be safe. He was so beautiful. I never was. He would be horrified by the things I've done. And if you've come to tell me that Michael wouldn't want me to hurt Henry, that he would want me to forgive. Your brother was a great man. We all loved him. The last time I saw him alive, he told me to forgive. And what did he get for that? Where is the justice in that? What is the point of that? He didn't change anything. You did. I, I can't believe it. <laughs> like, we, we've got everything. Yeah. yeah. This is very well done. This is everything. Yeah. She's clearly... Yeah, everything we needed. She relied She's on her whole no life illusion, yeah. for her brother. Her brother took care of her. Her brother made her feel like a good person. He was taken from her. Now he's gone. And yeah. so she'll do anything to get revenge on him, even though that's not what the brother would want. And she understands the context. She does. She's choosing this, and it's going to fucking backfire at her. more or less on board anyway, because they all liked him. And they, yep. and, and and they, they, they did like him. He was well. a decent leader or whatever like. for the morale, probably the personnel, but she's the one that actually made change happen. What's well, the, the often the dichotomy, right? The principled idealist and then the, the, the realist uh, yeah. who makes things happen. We, and yeah, that was just, you needed only one scene to do it for her and that was, that was it. That's everything yeah. we need about it now. Well, yeah, it feels real awkward now that saying, like, you know, her being the leader here. The previous episode wasn't about, about her. It was a setup. And oh, now it's about her, isn't it? That's how it works. Right. Yeah. This <laughs> scenario oh, looks similar. Oh, this looks to like something. Uh, yeah. Well, we're going to Wyoming. What? It's a huge state. It can fit two more people. <laughs> yeah. Huge yeah. state. Maybe we just call this one a success and say our far farewells. No, he'll change his mind. Trust me. This is how it goes. He's like, no. Ellie, never, ever, ever <laughs> happening. And then I'm like, I'm gonna ask you a million more times. And he's like, Whoa! Yep. Sniper. Oh. Yeah, there it oh. is, the sniper. The fuck is that coming from? Shut up. That sounds like the sound effect of nearly getting detected. You hear that? <laughs> oh. Go. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. They're like, <laughs> It's a shame about this bright ass moon. <laughs> it is very bright, isn't it? Stay here. What? Get out! <laughs> Fucking sniper. What do we do? Did you see where it came from? Somewhere down the street. Stay here. What? If you don't move, he's not gonna hit you. All right now. Y'all stay here. No! Before you start. I need you guys to keep him busy. I'm gonna go around, try to get in the house through the back, and then I'll take him out. I'm gonna go around and 
I see if I can't get the angle on him. But if you go out there, he's gonna kill you. It's dark and he has shit aim. Nobody's gonna kill me. Then he's gonna kill us. Okay. Hey, be careful. Do you trust me? This is one to one with the game, right? Yeah. Pretty much. You yeah. go around the side to ambush. I mean, it was during the day in the game. That's the only difference. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Matt, it is very bright. <laughs> yeah, this is a bit. Br this is bright. It's <laughs> very bright. Well, yeah. Like, but yes, no the moon can movies. be. Like, yeah, most the moon, moon, the moon can be bright. Sure, but like, come on. <laughs> well, it's just a common thing in shows and movies, right? Where like it's you blue shift it, or I, this is a bit different. Well, you commit like, like support dick and make it so you can't see shit. Yeah, yeah. Well, it would actually be night, but they put a very high wattage light way up on sticks. Slide it over to me. And then stay up here for another hour. That's all you have to do. Please don't do it. Please. All he had to do. That would be hardened again. Ah. Uh, oh, he was, and you would have called them by now, right? Probably. Yeah. Fuck. That's yeah. how they did it. Okay. <laughs> nice. Because yeah, they're gonna have. I was wondering if you were just a lone old man sitting up there. I was actually gonna say, <laughs> why the fuck is there a lone old man? It was like, oh, he's a fucking. Run! Oh, here we go. Clear them. Jesus. Oh, yeah. Gotta get him in the face. I'm glad he's missing, though, because people do miss instead of just getting, you know... Oh, any charge. Ah, damn. We both are right with your game. <laughs> Take the time with this one. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. That's, that's the way you do a payoff like that. Yeah. Panic shots and then, like, okay, breathe. Jeez. Oh shit, man, all we're missing now is an obvious zombies, I'd say. Ooh, is that gonna be the rumble that wakes him up, or...? Maybe. Hmm. Is this unrelated to the the little hole they had back in that other place, I guess? That was just evidence that sure. they're underground, I don't yeah, know. Maybe. Yeah, I don't see how anything else would save them. It would have to be a horde of zombies. I'll come out. Just let the kids go. Sorry. The girl is with the man who killed Brian, and well, Sam's with you. You don't understand. But I do. I know why you did what you did. He's just a fucking kid. Kids die, Henry. They die all the time. You think the whole world revolves around him? That he's worth everything? Man, I wonder what that's yeah, relevant yeah. to. Holy when shit. You yeah. <laughs> Get ready to take him. And run. Yes. Do it. It's time, Henry. It ends the way it ends. Uh oh. That'd be a hole. I wonder if he's realizing what this is. I'm wondering, yeah, if Joel knows what this is. I think they all sort of realize what, yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> oh fucking boy. <laughs> Dude, awesome. <laughs> oh, and look at that. It's actually, the amount of bullets is making a difference, but there's just so yeah. many of them. That's many. Yep. And once they scatter around, it gets harder and harder, and now you're just gonna get people getting picked yeah. off, isn't it? Oh, he's looking stressed out. Yep. Damn. Nice shot. Gotta have tight aim now, yeah. Run him down! Run him down! <laughs> 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 
Where's that bloater, though? Yeah. Crazy. Well, it's crazy too, right? Because every person they kill by biting then turns into one, right? Uh, eventually, well, right? I mean, or how quick well, is they, it? If they kill them, they're dead. And I think it depends on where they're bitten. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, damn, look at that. Christ. <laughs> Run. Find cover. Don't look back. Run! <laughs> I think he was going for a sidearm there as well. Oh, that's his head off, yeah. Why you gotta... Why you gotta do that? Oh, <laughs> look at that man! He is selling that fear. And stand there. She can. That was pretty neat. Jeez, we're in really confident, aren't we? Yeah, those are some close shots. I guess they're literally closer, at least. Oh. And yep. Yeah. She's good. <laughs> Someone's gonna yeah, eat you, lady. Water's, water's coming. Alright. And there you have it. Hi. Arc complete. Story finished. That is the point being made. That's what you get. Bye. Well. And that's it for them really does a great job of showing just how fearsome they are, you know, how, how yeah. bad it is when they show up. Yeah, and it looked like they were starting to run over to, they just go back to Kansas City, right? And there's going to be plenty more people to eat there. It's going to get overrun. Okay. Yeah. It seems like the big thing as well that makes them super threatening here is that they're more organized, more whereas in the original, there's no, like, seeming, like, Yeah, which know, seems network. to be the network idea, yeah, which, which helps, I think. I think it helps make them more threatening because it's not That's about just part. randomly bumping into them and then you get in trouble. It's, it seems more so the like there's a potential to be overrun. What's that comic book say? Endure and survive? Endure and survive. That shit's redundant. Yeah, it's, it's not great. <laughs> Look, I don't know exactly how I'm getting to Wyoming. I'm probably walking. What? Last I heard, he was in Wyoming. We get there, we find him, we find the fireflies. You know, if you want to... Yeah. Yeah. What do you say, man? <laughs> Sounds like a good plan, man. Yeah, I think it'd be nice for Sam to have a friend. I'll tell him in the morning. Uh, uh, Silence, uh, Springy. Steve? Negative. That means you're in section 153. I'm taking stock of all the food we found today. I see. And how are we doing on canned peaches? Did Henry send you? No. Why would Henry send me? To make sure I'm not fucking up somehow. I'd say we all did pretty good back there. Especially you. What, can you hear me? I read you. Okay. Everything all right? Yeah, everything's fine. Do I not look scared? Okay. Well, have a good night. How is it that you're never scared? Who says that I'm not? All the time. What are you scared of? Uh, let's see. Scorpions. Scorpions are pretty creepy. Uh, being by myself. I'm scared of ending up alone. What about you? Those things out there. 
What if the people are still inside? What if they're trapped in there without any control of their body? Is it still you inside? I'm scared of that happening to me. Oh, fuck. Okay. First of all, we're a team now. Okay, we're gonna help each other out. And second, they might still look like people, but that person is not in there anymore. My blood is medicine. Henry says that they've moved on, that they're with their families, like in heaven. Do you think that's true? I go back and forth. I mean, I'd like to believe it. But you don't. I guess not. Yeah, me neither. I promise. I mm -hmm. promise. A serious talk, I almost forgot. There. If he doesn't know about it, he can't take it away. All right. I'm pooped. I'll see you tomorrow. I guess that's the impression she may have gotten from the fireflies. Oh, none of the palm! You're doing the thing! I mean, there's worse things that's just fucking mixing blood right now. Which is a general no-no, everyone. That is a general no-no. Yeah, if you get anyone's blood in you, you need to uh, get medical attention immediately. BSI, body substance isolation. Unfortunately, this is something she may have concluded because she's not from... Like, the fireflies obviously deliberately didn't tell you much at all about how she's holding the cure. Or maybe she knows it's BS and she's just trying to make him feel better in the moment. No, I think she genuinely believes this may help. Yeah, look if at you her remember, face, they, I think she... they only told her the nature of her importance right before they handed her off to Joel. And so they may have just said, like, your blood is the key to the cure. That's probably why she thinks this should work. And then, of course, the first thing she did when he showed her was look over to the other room because if Joel finds out, he will shoot this kid. Mm. So, he'll stay awake with him to make sure he's immune too, right? Damn, that smells good. Good morning. Where's Sam? I let him sleep in for once. Oh. Well, if you want him to join us, you can go wake his ass up. Okay. Sam? <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> Shit, he's turning! <laughs> oh, 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 that's my fucking brother! <laughs> Henry? What did he do? What, what, what did I do? Sam. Give me the gun. I'm gonna get that gun for me, okay? Oh, okay, okay, easy. Give me the gun. Is this your fault? This is nobody's fault, Henry. It's all your fault! Give me the gun, Henry. Give me the gun. Henry! Henry, no! <laughs> Yeah.
Yeah, that hit pretty much as hard as it does in the game. Which way's west? Off they go to Wyoming. Well, that was a really good episode. I like that a lot. I don't know. I guess it's five in a row I'm now. Glad, was there I'm anything glad. that we asked for that wasn't in there? That was basically everything that we expected and wanted, and, and maybe a little bit more as well uh, in a few places. It's, it, it, it's, it is becoming increasingly clear with each successive episode what we're building up to thematically. Like, all of the seeds are being planted with all of these stories. Like, you... Very deliberately. That lady, she was just perfectly characterized. She's yeah. She's doing the thing where you, when you decide there are no choices in the world, there are only um, what happens as a result of this other thing. Like you, you make yourself an object in the world is is I think the philosophy behind it, and that's what she is as a character. She's decided when she talked to uh, with Henry, right? I know why you did what you did it was to save your kid, but you know, fuck you. Maybe a kid should die. Why did my brother die? Like how does that, how does that work? Fuck you. You die now. That's that's just it's the dominoes. And it's how everything fucking works in this universe. A lot of the time at the core, there's some good decision that was made. Or at least a decision that was bad that was made for good reasons. And then it's just like, yeah, well, repercussion is I fucking kill you now. Actually, okay, hot take. I think this is The Last of Us 2 done properly, this episode. Uh-oh, careful. Yeah, kind of. Uh, the, you know, <laughs> the... The, the how it you know the, the whole self-destruction element and you know it could lead you to be you well because this was what they kind of tried to do with the uh the wlf and the the other guys right yeah, part of... they were embroiled in the fighting that they collapsed where in this case it was a bit different than that because we've got like you've got like this very fundamentally personal conflict that is kind of like playing out here but then it all like in the face of the existential threat th there's a choice before you you're gonna let this go and like work together uh, or are you not going to do that? And then we see what happens in her case. One of the, she held on to it, so she died. One of the larger gaps in The Last of Us 2, as far as I was concerned, always, was that we never got to see Abby address the reasons that Joel did what he did. Part of the reason that happened is because the writers weren't familiar with the reason of why Joel did what mm. he did. Well, they, they hadn't figured it out. They weren't, or they changed their mind. There were yeah, they changed it. They um, forgot about them in the interim. It fucked everything. She is hyper familiar with what he did and why. And yeah, she's like, she and now care. you die and your kid dies. That's what happens next. That's what I think was missing for Abby. The only problem is, well, as soon as you do that, it turns them into a villain. That's what they are at this point. Well, an antagonistic, yeah, especially to, to, uh, to you know, our team, right? <laughs> she, the thing about it, right, Henry's, Henry's choice him. is I, I essentially get this guy killed in exchange for saving my brother. It's like, that's a really tough thing that all of us would have difficulty, and that's, that's part of the bigger mm -hmm. point of a lot of the hard choices made in the Last of Us universe. Hers is, it's done. There's nothing you gain by it's killing done. them anymore. But, now I, exactly, but I have to. Wants, that's what I'm doing. It's worse. What happens uh, next, yeah, what exactly. you did. It, it places her firmly in the role of villain. A villain whose logic you understand, but a villain nonetheless. And what did they yeah. do to it? Um, they had her strung out right till the end, trying to get her vengeance, and it got her killed. It got everyone it got killed. killed. And it got everybody killed, and it's going to destroy that whole city. Yeah, all yeah, because she might, desperately yeah. deserved- well, because she couldn't let it go, because her brother was right, and they didn't listen to him. The brother had it figured out. He yeah. got it. He nailed it. Um... And I guess in a certain sense, you could be like, well, I guess it's really sad then that Henry having to make this choice, I guess, ultimately led to this. And it's like, yeah, I guess it is really sad that that's, that's what happens. But that's what happened in the story. We are building up with all of these stories, perspectives on, like, the choices that characters can make in the apocalypse. Like, the difficult choices about what people choose to value and how they choose to conduct themselves. And it's so clearly deliberate, especially after this episode, it's so clear what they're building up to. Like, now, especially with having that change where Ellie knows that, um, that Sam got bit, and that she made something of an effort that she thought she could do at the time to try and save him, and then it doesn't work. Instead of in the game, she didn't know, and then it was a surprise. It's it's like you're kind of sowing the seeds a bit more of her really being motivated to uh to, to, save to make everyone. this 
to make this cure happen to save people because in this instance you tried and it didn't work. Not that the game didn't have that as an element. I guess it's just that this scene really like brings it to the forefront, which of course, and, and then of course still having the same stuff with Joel, right? That this experience is going to be the thing that is like the big push to pass Ellie off to to uh, to Tommy. Yeah, because enough away. enough dealing with this, it's so fucking hard having to meet people, care about them, watch them die, and, and to die. struggle yeah. to trust whether or not you should. All this stuff like. Joel, man, Pedro Pascal does such a good job this episode of convincing me he's fucking strung out. This is so much to yes. deal with. He looks really yes. exhausted emotionally. Emotionally exhausted, yeah. He's just um, and, and by the way, goddamn, they did some great work with Henry and Sam there. One episode. Yes, that's, yeah, one that's episode, all they got. They did an excellent job. It's kind of, it's just, it's a different journey, but it's the same format idea of giving them a lot of focus for one whole episode. They, we get their start, middle, and end. And, uh, and then how their story feeds into the story of Joel and Ellie. And I love this, um, this raw human shit happening where you, you might, I think uh, uh, when you, when people watch a TV show, they might try and like break it down logically in, in an erroneous way, I would go as far as saying. This same thing happens in the game, but basically when they burst in and Ellie's being attacked by uh, Sam Zombie, so to speak, and Joel is immediately like, fuck, I need my gun. And then uh, Henry's like, fuck no, you're not shooting my brother. And it's like, he's, look, like, and it takes him just a bit and then he ends up shooting him himself like because it's and then there's that moment of deep of like starting to realize what's happened right it was like the heat of the moment the the choice and then takes him a little bit of time to realize oh yeah it's just like uh, i can't do this like i can't i can't like i can't do this it was his one job and he failed that's how you would feel mm -hmm. about it, right? It's the same for so many characters. Yeah. That's how they feel. It, it fucking drives them just, nuts. Sam was the most important person in his life. I mean, and look at the choices he made to save Sam, and then Sam dies. You know, that weighs on him too, right? He made the choice. Well, and he even he says, did what did I do? In like, mind. in that moment, yeah. I killed Sam sort of thing, which applies yeah, on multiple exactly. levels. It's really good storytelling. Um, <laughs> there's just no... No, uh... No other way I'd happily give it. this that's, episode that's excellent really as, a, as a title for um, quality. This was really strong. There's a couple of problems, I'd say, but... Um, well, small it's generally plot scale. stuff, right, of, like, non-stop headshots, <laughs> like, that Joel was pulling off. Yeah, I would have preferred yeah, some more really misses really in that rad. sequence. He got, yeah. he got really but, good but with that's that. The thing, when, it comes to, when it comes to character, it's, it's really, really, really tight. This episode was really strong by way of character. We got so much, and it's Rag said it. I'm glad he said it first, but like, yeah, I feel feel pretty vindicated. Yes, are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, kind of. I mean, like I said, they're five now. Uh, yeah, now we're all five in a row. Just, just, a lot of our expectations things. about what this episode was going to be were realized, and particularly with regard to uh, it's Kathleen, right? The yeah, Kathleen. Um, I mean, yeah. what doesn't make sense we, about we, her at this we, point? Yeah, exactly. We got it. We we figured it out. We we had and, it. well, they even gave us and, the so and, her and brother. All of the, yeah, exactly. her brother he earned the, the role on a personable and social level and bound everybody. Probably gave them morale. She's the one that came up with the plans and executed them, likely because she's much more ruthless. The, the commentary is that the characters were two halves mm -hmm. of a whole that's what that's like yes and that's what they when, were together when he was lost when he died the only thing that was left was the vengeance the ruthlessness no forgiveness no mercy and look what it no did compassion and then the consequences that everything gets destroyed because there are some pretty present themes in the last of us about like the interpersonal relationships but then of course more of the challenges right of like well how much is one person's life worth to somebody what are they willing to do does it mean you know are they willing to commit to saving one person's life when they know that that may well you know endanger or cause greater harm to a larger number of people like those sorts of just... things but in the case of her right it's a good reflection of of like what that path led to it leads to destruction not just of her but everybody it's everywhere like why did that emergence hole fucking happen it's like well because joel shot the shit out of the driver and they crashed why did that happen because he's protecting ellie more than fucking anything right now. Why is that happening? Because they're trying to attack them lot for having killed the brother that she loved more than anything. And why are they doing that? It's like, well, Henry killed the brother, technically speaking, because he tried to protect the one thing that matters to him more than anything. Yeah. It's, it well, all comes back to that. Last of Us 2 cycles of violence, but way more effective. That's what I mean. I'm, I'm sorry, this, just, this but, is what but, they were I going for. The... Maybe if they have time now and they can reformat and rethink everything, they can redraw and refigure out and how to tell the story. And actually create a Last of Us 3 that functions. I mean, this is the thing. I mean, Could how do imagine? I not have some level of confidence after seeing these five episodes. No, that's you're wrong, Mola. It could My, turn to shit. At I any will moment. forever be worried about episode nine, but yep. I'm really not that worried about the next set of episodes. They could fall that's apart, of course. Yeah. In the I'm same not way. Expecting it. 
in the same Anything way that they set the bar quite high. Well, they yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, she's so happily invested. <laughs> it's just this is just a gosh darn good show at this point. I'm enjoying watching it's it. It's a very good show. Uh, it's becoming more and more difficult to talk during it to actually be able to turn well, this into a video. Be paying attention, paying attention, and and becoming immersed in the story. Yeah, and, and the journeys of these characters. You know what? Getting a little bit oh. tired of seeing this around. It's got to stop. Oh, oh All my right, god! So here we go. <laughs> How do we judge? How good acting is. All right, it's it's tough. As we've talked about before how it could be a little bit subjective, but a lot of the time there seems to be general agreement on the best and worst. That's something to start with. I think there's probably three major things, right? Like yeah. one, um, well, the general is convincing you of the emotion they're feeling, right? That's the easy sort of thing. The thing is, yes. What can what can we get closer to maybe being able to prove? Because me believing an emotion is really down to me a lot of the time, rather than, like individuals. I mean, so their ability to pull off different people. Right? Like, Pedro Pascal, I think, has proven this with all the characters we've He's seen him play. He's got range. Yeah. He's got there's that kind of range. range. Then there's the range of how many emotions and states of being can you pull off within a single character anyway. And then mm -hmm. I think the third one, which is often one that a lot of actors don't get to show off because of the writing or the direction, but how do you perform under great pressure? Having to perform I something... I the extremes. Yeah. The extreme. So... Bella Ramsey has been shat on forever for being really shit in this well, show. Well, they gotta stop. They have to stop. Um, yeah, the first really, two episodes really, really I was good. pretty meh, but I think they finally gave her... She she really has proven that she could be a great character. Yeah, episodes uh, episodes four, four and five. five also, really if I was that. to go with those three formats, right, I can't say to what she's like playing other characters, because this is the only character I've seen her play, okay? Like, uh, mm -hmm. well, I've seen her play... Um, Joanna Mormont, I think, for like five seconds in Game of Thrones, so I don't think that counts for much. But, you know like the, the beginning of this episode, where she says, uh... That's a weird fucking tone, man. That's just the way he sounds. He has an asshole voice. Joe, tell him he's okay. She's doing stressed and assertive there, I would say. You could say disbelief and frustration when he, he doesn't do what she says. Everything is great. Dude. Fuck. And so she has to sell those like emotional states. Then you got, um, she's done like rage in episode one. People from Fedra, you hear me? Let me out or you're gonna pay, motherfuckers! And when she killed the guy, like shocked, stunned. <laughs> when when uh, Kathleen was just eaten, like that was, that was a shit ton of shock. The, the camera hung on uh, Ellie for a bit there. I think it's just she's watching someone getting eaten alive, of course. <laughs> Playful and like childlike stuff she's done with Sam in this episode. Endure. Survive. Fuck yeah, man. <laughs> I don't see any weird movements. Stiff. And then a lot of the playful stuff she's done with Joel. It'll still be stationary. When she was like tearing up behind the wall. <laughs> And when she's talking about with Joel about the life she's taken and stuff, you could call that like that's like trying to portray vulnerable and like haunted, shaken. What we talked about how she's uh, assertive and sticks up for herself with the whole. And you made a choice, so don't blame me for something that isn't my fault. Like I said, it's sort of like emotional maturity, but also being able to portray someone who isn't going to allow herself to be sort of trampled over, which I think a lot of people said was like a, a trait they were hoping to see. Ultimately, I'd say that that's a pretty big selection of range of different emotions, but then you've also got like the absolute shock and horror from um, that ending sequence. I think that was it for me. After seeing that final scene, she's, she's, she's solid now. I actually like her as Ellie. Oh yeah, I think so. It's weird because you are right in the sense that we can all pretty much align on who the great actors are and who the terrible actors are. The big Very old gray accurately area. across the spectrum. Yeah. In the middle, it gets kind of gray, but I think the broad swath of actors, it's generally agreed upon which ones are good and bad. Even though there doesn't seem to be any sort of super hard criteria, you know, are, are they able to convince people most of the time? Are they able to emotionally move people most of the time? Are they able to make you forget it's an actor playing a role most of the time? Seems to sort of be what is, you know, the thing that unites us on that. The term acting is funny to me because when it's done right, it's not really an act in a way. Like the emotions are real. They usually, it's a, real a lot emotion, of actors yeah, will. Pulled from a less than it's making the real thing in an, in, a, in an artificial way in a sense yeah you'll have a lot of actors who uh, unearth something from their past like the saddest moment in their life and they'll bring that energy into it like i've been on film sets where i've observed i saw this one day i was i saw this actor he was stood in the corner of a hallway and he was like crying 
like he's, he's like really sobbing i could see his shoulders kind of moving around i'm like is that guy okay and everyone's like dude just leave him alone he's he's amping himself up for the scene he needs to get into this headspace and it's like oh okay that's there that was his process i feel like that's some people aren't they don't quite need to do that where they have to go into the corner of a room and and just block themselves off from everybody some people are better at channeling that negative energy some some people can do it quite quickly um everyone has their own process but the emotions are real when the job is done right i think that that there would be one or maybe a selection of a couple of moments in that final sequence but especially that last reaction she has to um a lot of this show, they seem to be playing with a lot of, like, how humans react is complicated to a lot of things. But um, the fact that she goes to, like, scream, but it cuts off because it's like the gunshot plus the friend of yours committing suicide. But simultaneously, it's all over. And they did that with the uh, zombies, too, at the end when it was all rowdy and there was the lights and they were screaming and everything. And they just cuts to him in the hotel and it's just dead quiet. I imagine to help with that scene, like you think usually like if the camera is not on you, then they wouldn't have to set up certain things like whatever the camera is not seeing. They probably had the guy who played Henry there falling down, even though he wasn't being filmed, just so the actress could better put him per, her, herself in the situation where she's observing somebody kill themselves. It'd be a bit different if somebody with a script was standing there instead. It's like, okay, now cry, Ellie. Yeah. They probably actually had Henry falling down, pretending he's dead. Well, yeah, and she just looked... stares at the body. Because we just went from what was a pretty good environment to everything falling apart entirely. Yep. Yeah, the night before, things were great. I mean, we I have this friend who's my age, close enough. We've got some traveling companions. We were able to, you know, none of us are hurt. Things are, like, legitimately really looking up. Like, this is probably the best thing that's happened in a long time, all things considered. Uh, no, uh, uh, Pedro... Pascal, great in the episode. Same for, as we said, Henry, Sam, and uh, I think Kathleen was pretty good as well. The actress for her. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Yeah. Didn't get a lot of her, but I was convinced in her, her villain origin scene. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. And we needed it, so thanks for that. <laughs> like, this room feels like the whole episode was just filled with stuff we needed. Just tell it a story. I'm pretty strong as a, so to speak, half-season finale, I guess. I'm a fan, and I guess... Six, seven, eight, nine. We shall see. We are uh, past the halfway mark. Yeah, that's so right. We are the majority of the story, at least by slim margin. And yeah, so far so good. In fact, just saying so far so good might be a little unfair. It's been like the last few episodes have been pretty great. Yeah, I've been very, <laughs> very pleased to the point where before we start an episode, I'm like, all right, I'm I'm ready to see what happens next. Well, I'm excited this to keep watching it already. At this point. Oh yeah, looking forward to seeing it every week. Well, three was the favorite for me. Then four. And now five, so and now it's probably five. Yeah, we I imagine a lot six, of great work in five. Six will calm back down, probably. We'll we'll. Have well, a... that'll be the uh, probably the Tommy episode. Yes. Yeah. Which uh, I guess but... the yeah I guess the question will be how much of uh, Tommy's story because they've got the the change here right where Tommy's got his own sort of uh, troubles and, and problems going on seemingly and I, I guess the question will be I wonder if we're going to see any of that uh that backstory that Tommy is not so fond of of his time with Joel during yeah. the uh, the intervening years because he did not he does not like that time I imagine episode six they'll bring back the teaser. Again, maybe, 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 yeah, maybe, maybe we'll like, see what... like the direct aftermath of uh, Sarah's death, like what Joel's looking like for those first few days, or the maybe we'll slot, ahead a bit more. The teaser slot really comes in handy with anything that it's it's like such a large time jump that it would it would mm. be weird if they were all like connected together back to back without that buffer of the title sequence, like that flashback to Jakarta. It's good to have the teaser slot for a scene like that. But you don't know. Yeah, it's a good it. for a cold open. It's good for a uh, thing that is markedly different from, you know, what the main story is or a different time, like you said. Yeah. So I can see them bringing back the teaser for a flashback with Joel and Tommy and then title sequence back to the present. Well, and I guess the question is as well is are we going to see Tommy's time with the Fireflies? We got we gonna that. We're going to have Ellie and Riley, presumably. We've got. Uh, uh, that's got to be coming eventually, and then of course you've got the David stuff. There's a um, lot left uh, for them. There's to a do, lot so. left, and I feel like they've uh, they've sown a lot of seeds. They've done a lot of good work so far. Now they got to bring it home. They got to they got to nail the landing, stick the landing. When um, it's crazy to me to think that we're going to be watching episode what like eight ish around when Mando 
starts. <laughs> the and contrast. I swear to God, we're gonna have like he's gonna be like, I would like to buy some cheese. Some, sp- some blue space cheese. I can bring you in one. Uh, I can bring you in Dude, coal. this is the way. It's going to be such a stark this contrast this between. This is the thing, guys. We got to savor the good when it comes because we're going to. The sludge begins eventually. You know, the sludge is. It's starting up real soon. Ant Man. And then. Man back doing into- Ant Man. Star Wars. Sludge. The Sludge Shower. Mandalorian. Return. Yeah. Well, it's because, yeah, because the beginning of the year has been pretty solid by way of media from video games and, you know, uh, television and films. It's been it's been really good. And I guess it's more broadly, it's like, I don't know, guys, maybe give the show a little bit of credit. <laughs> it's very clear. There's a lot of trust issues with Naughty Dog and Neil Druckmann projects. That's why this is happening. Yeah, I sure. Stand, but um, we're and, here to judge and, it for what it is, time. not for who made it. Yeah. Um, it's what we always do. And so far, so good. As as Free said, is an understatement. So yeah, so far so great. In the game, Sam doesn't show Ellie his wound, and it, like you're saying, Fringy, it's a surprise when she wakes up. In this version, he shows her, and she would she be so sure about her blood being the cure there on the wound that she would be comfortable sleeping in that room? She wasn't like, comfortable for- sleeping in that room. She promised to stay awake with him, and she fell asleep. That's right. She was in the chair, wasn't she? Yeah. yeah you you look at the way she up. was sitting. She didn't intend to fall asleep, but that's just what happens, right? You close your eyes briefly and then you're asleep. But uh, it's also, yeah, you just have to believe she was sort of naive enough to think that it's as simple as a blood transfer and she can cure a person. Or um, at the very least, maybe, right? That she's going to at least try something, even though it's obviously probably not going to work. Yeah, if it I is think... naivete in that case, like, that's fine. I was just curious about it. Well, like, what so... exactly what was going through Ellie's head? What she were was... the writers thinking there? We can all agree that she would try it. I think it would be in character for her to try it, and then she was going to keep an eye on him, and if things got worse, do something, but obviously. Uh, and, and you know, I think the reason why he didn't try to attack her earlier is the, is, is the idea that he's actually deaf, so he's just sitting there with no necessary interaction. Oh! Well, because well, mm. in the game, it was uh, he was standing by the window, um, but that was because Ellie wasn't in the room with him. But yeah, I think it's just, she didn't mean to fall asleep. Yeah, of course. Right. Yeah. And then... I can see that, yeah. Great episode. I mean, fuck, I was riveted, man. Like, oh, I'm, oh. uh... Give me. And we, we didn't pleased. see Infected for a while, but now they came back with a force. And when they were all, they're all running out of the ground like that, it's like, oh, shit. Oh, I figure people will like this episode for that. The yeah. army of zombies right. versus the soldiers. Yeah. Bloater, we got a nice bloater kill. Poor whatever his name is, getting his head torn right. off. That was cool. Yeah, which is, you know, it, it always sounds weird, but that's neat that they gave him that role. He got to do a couple things. Oh, yeah, that's Tommy's, yeah, Tommy's VA. And uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson are meant to be in it too, and we haven't seen them yet. So we've still got more. Oh, and I think, uh, I'm not sure if Nolan North has a role as well. Why don't they bring people back? Why'd they just... <laughs> well, you have to, no. this is the thing, guys. You kind of have to assume this probably Neil's doing. Probably. I'm just like, hey, well, they were, you know, they were part of the game. So, can we give him something? In any case, think- that's episode five. <laughs> yep. yep. Thanks for watching, everybody. Doodle yeah. Pip. Cheerio. Goodbye. Bye, boy. Bye. Bye. Run. What'd you bring me?